Well, what I'm going to be uh, presenting this morning is the scientific case, and the scientific case for what we call a middle-aged uh, cosmos. Now, I want to give you the background first. You know, as believers in Jesus Christ, we recognize that the Bible is inspired by God, all of it, and the universe was created by God. And eight times in the Bible, it tells us it's impossible for God to lie or deceive. And therefore, the words of the Bible and the facts of nature always must agree. And this is spelled out in one of the great creedal statements of the Protestant faith, the Belgic Confession, to quote, we know him, namely God, by two means. First, by the creation, preservation, and government of the universe, since that universe is before our eyes like a beautiful book in which all creatures, great and small, are as letters to make us ponder the invisible things of God. As it says in Psalm 19, God has given us two books, the book of scripture and the book of the record of nature. However, the record of nature is not the same as science. Science is the human interpretation of the facts of nature. Likewise, when any of us reads the Bible, that's theology. And our reading of the Bible is subject to human interpretation. So theology is not the same as the words of the Bible. Any personal reading is not the same. Now, all of us had reasons to believe a must sign a statement in the belief in biblical inerrancy. As a president of reasons to believe, I insisted upon it. And that we sign off on all the articles that have been published by the International Council of Biblical Inerrancy, which in our opinion is the most definitive statement ever published on what biblical inerrancy is all about. And I'm going to read to you from Article 12 of the International Council for Biblical Inerrancy. Namely, we affirm that since God is the author of all truth, all truths, biblical and extra-biblical, are consistent and cohere, and the Bible speaks truth when it touches on matters pertaining to nature, history, etc. Not just faith and practice, but science and history as well. We further affirm that in some cases, extra-biblical data have value for clarifying what Scripture teaches and for prompting correction of faulty interpretations of the words of the Bible. But we explicitly deny that extra-biblical views or anything in the scientific record would ever disprove the teaching of Scripture or hold priority over it. Now, 20th century cosmology. 20th century cosmology is a clash between two worldviews. An infinitely old universe where there's no beginning and no beginner basically naturalism. The universe is all there is. And then the other view is that the universe is billions of years old with a beginner who exists beyond space and time and creates the universe independent of space and time. So this is the 20th century battle between naturalism and creationism, between a universe that's trillions or quadrillions or more years old and a universe that's only billions of years old. And if you want to read about this, I've written a book on the history of 20th century cosmology, The Fingerprint of God. If you want to see it from a secular perspective, this book was written by Robert Jastrow, an agnostic astronomer at Harvard, uh, titled God and the Astronomers. But both of us tell a story of how astronomers began to discover with the advent of Einstein's theory that the universe expands, it expands from the beginning, it's a universe that gets colder and colder as it gets older and older. And since that spoke of a God beyond space and time, astronomers fought that tooth and nail, but over 60 years of research finally convinced them that it was a Big Bang creation event, whether they liked it or not. And therefore, we really are stuck with this causal agent beyond space and time who designs the universe for our benefit. In that sense, I want to declare that all of us here, whether we're young Earth or middle-aged Earth, are on the same side. Both young and middle-aged cosmos proponents hold that the universe is far too young to allow for any naturalistic explanation for life. This is the reason for the opposition against Big Bang cosmology, the fact that it didn't allow enough time for the origin of life or enough time for that life that would have originated in our natural conditions to evolve into human beings. If it's only billions of years old, that's far, far too little time uh, to permit that to happen from a naturalistic perspective. We're also both on the same side in the sense that we recognize whether we believe the universe is young or middle-aged, that the universe must have been created by a being that exists beyond space and time. 
This is what separates the Christian faith from all the other world's religions. In the other religions of the world, we have God or gods or forces creating within space and time that always exists. What's unique to Christianity is a claim that God creates independent, outside of space and time, and that space and time actually have a beginning. Now what I'd like to begin with is uh, something referred to as the space-time theorems of general relativity. This is the first of those space-time theorems published in 1970, and this is the research paper that launched Stephen Hawking to worldwide fame. And in this paper he says, if the universe contains mass, and if general relativity reliably describes the dynamics of the universe, then space and time must have been created by an agent outside of space and time. And I've written in my books that this is the theologically most significant theorem of mathematics ever produced by humanity because it proves that there must be this agent beyond space and time. So in that sense, all of us, young Earth or middle-aged Earth, can rejoice that astronomers have been able to prove that a being beyond space and time exists and is responsible for creating the universe. Now a second piece of evidence I could give you that is the fact that we can measure the temperature left over from the creation event at different distances with respect to Earth. So we can look at gas clouds in distant galaxies and measure the temperature of the radiation from the creation event. And as you can see in this curve here, it dramatically shows you how the temperature of the universe has gotten colder and colder as it's gotten older and older. Uh, today over at the right is 2.725 degrees above absolute zero, but we can look sufficiently far away, uh, 10, 11, 12 billion light years away, and measure the temperature uh, being around uh, 10 to 12 degrees above absolute zero. Temperature measurements are a near perfect fit to what the Big Bang creation event would predict for the declining temperature of the universe. This isn't the strongest scientific evidence for Big Bang cosmology, but is one I think lay people can most easily understand. We can directly observe the universe getting colder and uh, colder. The other thing we can do is look at galaxies far away. This is a cluster of galaxies two billion light years away which means we're seeing it as it was two billion years ago because it took light two billion